So my name's Aidan Klukas and I'm a trainee solicitor. So a trainee solicitor uh, works underneath sort of associates, partners, so the fee earners of a particular law firm. Effectively, we're here to learn, um, learn how various departments operate. So we'll get shifted around. We get shifted every four months, some do every six months. And uh, yeah, so we are in a legal supporting role, as it were, but um, here to learn for two years before we qualify um, to become fully fledged solicitors. Well, it's a bit weird. I sort of was into history and music. Um, and then after doing a music qualification, I thought I'd change my career approach. Had a few chats with some family friends and uh, doing a history degree, discovered that I could convert to law. Thought it was a bit out of the realms of possibility, um, but after you know speaking to people, managed to see that I could do that. Did three years there, did a year's conversion called the Graduate Diploma in Law at a different university, and then I did my legal practice course the year after, which would be the um, so effectively the fourth year for law students, but for me converting as my fifth year. I've had a few work experience stints at um, a couple of law firms around Birmingham, ranging from like two days to a week or two. I did work for six to six to seven months at a, a law firm in Worcester. Um, effectively, I was officially a marketing assistant, but I was basically there just to sort of soak up a sort of professional atmosphere. For five years, a little over, on and off, I worked at um, a cinema part-time, um, but I worked that job when I was not at university in the holidays up until about a week before I came here. It still teaches you, if you have got the right mindset, it can still teach you disciplines, you know, in terms of just time management, etc. Um, but I think it was more at attitudes to people and meeting people you don't, you won't see ever again, meeting people you want to see more. You know, even at a cinema you had returning customers, so in effect you built up that rapport with people. So yes, yeah, so there's a lot to learn from those sort of jobs. Either a law degree or an undergraduate and then a conversion, that's what I did. Uh, you do the undergrad or convert and then the LPC, um, something that you have to do as well. So it's four to five years of university studying. There's always qualifications that keep going. Um, you know, at the end of my two years, I then have qualified again to be a solicitor. So it's arguably not done yet. Um, but yeah, undergraduate and then um, the LPC. And then you should be able to start uh, your training contract. On the LPC, we started um, your more probably more broader aspects of um, law, so real estate and uh, business law and practice, and then there's um, you know, other aspects of uh, being a solicitor, what you're expected to do, your obligations. Uh, then you pick electives. Um, so you know, my electives were like mergers and acquisitions, so more business focused, um, employment, intellectual property. Um, um, but yeah, so that second term was all, I think it was all what we wanted to do. There might have been one of the module on like conduct and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so conduct was the uh, one focused on the SRAs, how to be a solicitor basically, or your obligations as a solicitor. Um, there were other aspects on accounts, which was all maths driven. We had to, in an exam, we had to produce a ledger showing money coming in, going to all these accounts and how that works. And so yeah, so the modules are, some of them are uh, mandatory, but quite a lot of options to choose. Um, but that doesn't dictate your career either. But yeah, so it's quite a, a wide array of topics in the um, LPC. And especially trying to study for four different exams. If you have picked stuff that's all over the shop, then that's probably quite difficult. But I think luckily mine was all quite similar and stuff I'd already done on the previous courses. It's mostly exams, um, at least at the institute I did it at, I believe it's similar all over. Um, there's 
brief coursework, um, but only two or three bits. Um, but yeah, mostly big three hour exams. So we did two hours, or we did those anyway, two hours of answering written questions, an hour of multiple choice questions. Discipline, um, a lot of that, that will always be something that comes up in your meetings as well. The ability to engage with clients, just keep a real personal touch to your work, but still act professional. Good attention to detail, again, that will come up all the time because it's, it's never, you've never done anything 100%. There'll always be something that your uh, fee earner or supervisor should flag up with you. Um, so yeah, there, there's various, it might be just a typo. Those will probably stop pretty early on. Um, and then the various sort of legal terminology, how you would draft certain things. Good use of the English language um, or any language that you happen to be practicing in. Um, but for me, it's English. Um, just to sort of understand structuring of sentences and then how those work in a legal sense. Um, a lot of people see huge swathes of text and no punctuation and um, you know it's in a modern era it's how to how to draft something effectively so that another solicitor can understand it and then relay that information to a client um, but yeah it's mostly um, good skills to have when you start are those sort of proofreading aspects good discipline time management um, good memory or at least good um, the ability to write down exactly what you're doing if you haven't got a good memory uh, every day I, at the end of the day, I have a to-do list and I do tomorrow's to-do list just to give me a bit of a reminder of um, which matters I'm working on, which are important. We've then got a broader to-do list throughout the whole two years. So um, yeah, it's just making sure you're up to date with everything. So um, if you can get into a good system of maybe arranging your calendar, I used to do that at uni just to get like where I'm studying, what I'm studying, what room I'm in, that will sort of be a good thing to carry over. You tend to work on a number of projects at once, so you've got to constantly jump between various different clients who might be contacting you or remembering the intricacies of each sort of deal. So a lot of the day is spent emailing clients or maybe even calling them. Often we're asked as a trainee to perhaps research a particular niche area of a law that maybe the owner hasn't come across before. Um, and then we'll adopt references like an essay for them. The documents can be drawn from precedents. Some matters might be can be so simple that it could just be a precedent, and then it's just a case, you know, making sure it's tailored to the right uh, to what the matter needs. But more often than not, um, matters change. So your first objectives with a client can differ at each stage of the process. So it's still remembering that although there's a precedent that is only a guide and your end result 90% of the time should look nothing like that precedent. Meeting the clients, which probably before getting into this job I never thought would be something I actually really enjoyed doing. But yeah, anytime there's a meeting, I really enjoy uh, talking to them on a personal level and a professional level. Um, and then yeah, seeing, seeing a job through to completion is, is always quite satisfying. But I think the most challenging bit is probably starting departments. It's like starting school again, but we do it every four months. So you get chucked into a new discipline with a new group of people. Every department's different. And so you're not only learning about the department and about the people, about your supervisor, about office protocol in that department, you're then learning an entirely new discipline of law. And it doesn't really matter how much you studied at university, it doesn't compare to the real thing. So I think it's important, whilst that's challenging, just to accept that you basically know nothing and just dive straight in and ask as many questions as you can. So it's a challenge, but it's one that you can easily alleviate. In our firm, we do an eight-month seat at the end of our uh, two years, uh, in, our, in the end of our second year. Um, that'll be in a seat we've, I think we've already done, 
and the one we want to specialize in. Um, you have a conversation with the firm as to what you want to do and what they think you're best suited to. Um, the business needs of the firm probably take, they're not as important at this aspect because it is just about you qualifying and ideally being an asset to the firm going forward. Um, but yeah, there's, you could down the line perhaps change your um, specialism. Yeah, just because you pick uh, real commercial real estate, you, you wouldn't have to be pigeonholed as that for the next 60, 70 years of your life. So you start either trainee or paralegal. Some people might stay paralegal. Um, as a trainee, you'll do your two years and then uh, become a qualified solicitor. Um, so if you still stay in that career, um, then an NQ. And then, yeah, so then you, you, you just track where, what do you want to do? So most people would end up at associate level, but then you might have a conversation with yourself and think, right, well, do I want to go to the next level, become partner? Um, it's not as simple as that, but that, those are the sort of broader uh, ladder steps. But yeah, there's, there's a visible ladder, maybe more so than in other professions. Um, but each of those rungs has its own smaller levels, even if they're unofficial, um, you know, in terms of who you're working with and what you specialize in. Um, so yeah, so partners may come to you for different work. And, yeah, it's finding your own specialism and then where do you want to be on the ladder? So we, we're governed effectively by the Solicitors Regulatory Authority, the SRA. Um, so yeah, there's, you'll learn about it in the course. There's many modules on uh, various conduct aspects, outcomes that you must accomplish, you know, how to engage with a client. Um, largely you're left to your own devices as long as you stick within the remit. Um, it's a big body of text to get through. Um, but yeah, so, so they sort of, well, they regulate each aspect of, you know, a solicitor's working life. It's important to, firstly, to maintain a good balance always. Um, when you're on your LPC, when you're doing LPC, you're still at university, um, but it's not a post, it's not an undergraduate course. It's, there's no freshers and first year sort of only need to get a DE or only need to get a 2-2 in first year or whatever the rule is. Um, you need to get the best result you can. Um, firms might look at you in your interview, tailor, uh, and then might think, you know, we can tailor him to our approach. Um, but ultimately, yeah, just focus, be driven, but still uh, have a soul and still like actually live. Um, because most firms don't want to hire robots. Um, they want people with personality. So I think you just got to understand what you want from the job, what you want from your career and uh, approach university in the same way um because also you're you're spending a lot of money on it or someone's spending a lot of money on it um and yeah so just keep on maintaining a professional attitude um but still enjoying yourself <laughs>